Metallica just performed in front of 70 or 80,000 fans yesterday at Slane Castle, and it looks like things are better than ever in the Metallica world. But of course, there are a lot of people who do like to point out certain imperfections about Metallica and their history. And uh, in a new interview, the frontman of Anvil had some less than stellar things to say about Metallica's documentary, Some Kind of Monster. Anvil. The legendary Canadian metal band cited as an influence for members of Anthrax, Guns N' Roses, and Metallica, unfortunately never rose to their same level. And according to Anvil frontman Steve Lips Cudlow, there wasn't anyone in North America at the time for the band to cite as an influence otherwise. Speaking to Rock Hard with Jay Conroy, Cudlow had this to say, Who else were they going to credit? In North America, there wasn't anything to credit. There's no one else to credit. To be honest with you, there was no one else. That was another part of the problem because we were doing, you know, when David Krebs is watching us playing 666 and Motormout, he's going, you guys shouldn't be doing songs like that. No one understands it, including himself. He was going, you shouldn't be playing songs like that. That's where Slayer and Metallica picked up the ball and ran with it and left us in the dust. They completely did not understand what the hell we were spearheading and that's what we were doing. Just, these guys were hot. He thought we were one of the greatest live acts he's seen in his life, but he thought we were completely inaccessible as far as radio was concerned. Later in the interview, the Anvil frontman spoke on the band's 2008 documentary, Anvil, the story of Anvil, which has had monumental success, and he made some interesting comments about Metallica. He said, The thing is, when people make documentaries, they make documentaries about retrospect. That doesn't work. Ultimately, that does not work. That's what the biggest difference about that movie was. It's not about telling tales of the past and how great you were. It's not about that. It's about how great we are now and where we're going now, in the moment, and not blowing bullshit. It's not bullshit. And that's the one thing. Everybody who makes a video or a DVD, it's all blowing out fucking fan shit. It's like, we are great. They don't know any of the hardships, all the stuff that really is the truth. There are a dozen great bands and thousands of bands that are like Anvil. Thousands. Way more like Anvil than there is that have made it. No question about it. And if you're one of the bands that make it, going out and making a movie, who gives a shit? You've already made it, he said laughing. What are you even doing it for? And if you're successful and you come with the approach that you're not happy with your success, then you come across like some kind of monster, the Metallica documentary. It's like, what's wrong with you guys? You got the world at your feet. You're whining and complaining and going to rehab it's the polar opposite a band who has had nothing but hardships its whole existence has a brighter outlook and is happier to be on stage than a pig in shit it makes no sense but on the other side of it it makes a lot of sense because human nature is to whine and complain even when there's nothing to whine and complain about but when there really is stuff to whine and complain then what do you have to do you have the opposite i'm gonna make it better i'm gonna have a brighter future you close the door on the negativity and only think about the positive because you're in a positive universe. All you can worry about is the negative coming in. That's what the difference is. You can't hope as a successful band or a successful musician to make a DVD do what Anvil did because you're gonna just come across as a whiny little baby. What are you complaining about? And then if you go out and talk about how great you are, then you're coming across as a rock star. You think you're great. You come across as a pompous piece of shit. So what's the right chemistry? What Anvil did, and you can't reproduce that. You need 30 years in obscurity and hard work and hardship and a dozen albums and the credibility that other musicians who have made it look at you as you're something to look up to and you're something that inspired them. That's what's different about Anvil that makes it different is you've got Lars and you've got Slash and you've got Lemmy and the list is huge. It's not about patting myself on the back. It's about them patting me on the back. I'm not saying shit. I don't go around telling people I'm great. People tell me I'm great. And that's what the difference is. That's not my job to go around telling people how great I am. Let the word spread from what I do and how I go about doing it. That's what it's all about. Anvil is no doubt a legendary metal band and they did pave the way for a lot of very big name artists, but he does come off a little salty and a little sour here towards Metallica. Look, they had a very dark time in their history and 
People deal with fame differently, and they certainly had their struggles with that. But at the end of the day, James Hetfield had to be rehabbed. I mean, he had a serious issue. He had to leave the band during that time, and it was a tumultuous part in their history. It was much more than just, oh, you don't have any issues. You've got the world at your feet. People at all different levels in life have serious problems, and James wasn't just being a rock star. Certainly, he came off as sort of pompous at different times in the film, but he was going through a rough patch in his life. Look at him now. He seems like a really good dude. So everybody goes through things and deals with things in different ways. And, uh, you know, Anvil, look, if you haven't checked out their documentary, you should definitely check that out to see what they've gone through. And he's right in the sense that he dealt with adversity and his band has dealt with adversity much better than virtually any band could. I highly recommend that documentary if you haven't seen it. Anyways, that's all for now. Thanks so much for joining us here today at Rockfeed. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on breaking hard rock and heavy metal news. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you all very soon.